everybody. How are you? Good. I'm Brett. I'm the head beekeeper at Pointer Bee Farms. This is my queen bee, Amber. Hi. And we're going to let her tell about bees today. So How about that? Sound like fun? Sound good? Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> okay. So today we're going to learn a little bit about bees. We brought some bees with us. This is just a few of our bees, okay? So this hive is just one of the many hives that we have. And we're going to just kind of give you some information so you understand the bees. And if you have questions, we can answer them. But the important thing is learning how important these little bees are to us, okay? So one of the things we're going to talk about first is this is just one frame of bees. Okay, so there's lots of bees usually when we're in a, in a frame or if we're in a hive, we have lots of bees. But right now, this is probably about, how many would we say? You think 50? You think 100? How many bees do we think might be in that hive right now? 500? It's about, go ahead. We're a little bit high, so we're going to go 500 or higher. Right, so we're between 500 and probably about 1,000 bees, okay? And this, so this is not a full hive. So just on this alone, and we have some bees down here, there's anywhere between 500 and 1,000 bees in this one little hive, our little traveling hive, okay? The thing about bees is, all the bees in here right now, most of them are female. So a hive is majority female bees, okay? There are male bees, we call them drones. They're bigger than the, the female bees. They're a little bit bigger, but not as big as a queen. So there, you have little tiny worker bees, you have the drones that are a little bit bigger, and then we have the queen bee who's the biggest bee in the entire hive. Okay, so here's a fun fact about all these bees. When a baby's born, a bee, what do you think the first thing that bee does when they're born? When they come out of their little tiny cell where they're born, what is the first thing a baby bee does? Make honey. Nope, not yet. Sometimes your mom and dad might want you to do this to your room. When you wake up. When you wake up, what do they want you to do sometimes? Or if you play with toys, what do they want you to do? Clean Say it. Clean up. A baby's bee, very first job when they're born, is to clean out their little space. So as soon as they come out, they turn around, they go back in, and they start to clean out their space where they were born. So it's kind of like their room. So their first job when they're born, they go right to work and they clean up their room. All the bees in here have a job. Every bee has something to do. They're always busy. That's what we say, busy bees, busy bees. They are very busy. Yep. So we have different jobs in here. We have the baby bees who will clean out their area. We have worker bees who will make sure that the hive is being taken care of. So our worker bees are the ones that work inside the hive. We have foragers. They like to go out and they find the flowers and they come back. We have guard bees. They protect the hive. So if anyone comes into their hive, they're like, you, nope, you're not supposed to be here. You got to go. And they tell them to leave. We have, what else? We have Undertaker. undertakers. So our undertaker bees, if a bee happens to die when they're in the hive, because they get old and that happens, they will take their bee out and they fly that bee away and then they drop them in someone else's yard or wherever they're at. But they will clean their hive. So bees are very, very clean. They don't want anything in their hive that's not supposed to be there. So they, every bee has a job, okay? We have bees that will feed the queen. We have bees that will make sure they feed the babies when they're getting ready. They're called nurse bees. Nurse bees. Okay. They make their comb. Okay. They start building and stuff like that. So bees are very important. They are always, always, always working. There's not a time when our bees are not working. Okay. So, right now they're in here, you can see them walking around, they're on the comb, and we'll talk about the different things you're going to see on here. But what is the one job that's very important right now for them? So spring into fall is a very, very, very busy time for bees. What are they doing? Make honey. Making honey. Make honey. Making honey, absolutely. So this is the honey. Okay. So bees are very busy right now. This is their busy season. They come out, 
in the spring and they look for the very first flowers they can find. And the very first flowers are usually dandelions, clover, and they will go for tree. They'll go for tree nectar and pollen. Okay, so bees will go out and they will find a flower and they're going to get the nectar. Do we have a picture of our nectar bees? So this is a bee on a flower and their little tiny tongue comes out and they take out the nectar from that flower. And where do you think it goes? In their mouth and then where does it go? Into their belly. And guess how many bellies they have? <laughs> More than one. Less than 14. Two. So bees have two bellies. This little tiny bee has two bellies. Okay? One belly is where they take their nectar in, and the other belly is where they actually feed themselves. Okay? So when they take the nectar in, it goes into a, a belly that they're going to store their honey or their nectar. Yep, so I'm a bee, right? Yeah. This is what happens. I fly, whoo, I'm flying around, and I can fly up to two miles, so I fly pretty far to find flowers, okay? I'm not really a bee, right? So I come back, and I'm, oh, I'm tired, whoo, I got honey, I got some nectar. Do you think I go all the way into the hive? No, that's too much work. So I find another bee, and I give the nectar to that bee. And that bee eats it, and they go back into the hive, and off I go again. This bee is the one that will go into our hive, because again, we have worker bees for that. And they're going to go in, and they're going to put the nectar into the comb. And that's the start of making honey. Okay, so it's the process of one bee giving the nectar to another bee, and then that bee putting it into the comb, that we start the process of honey. And I'm going to go back out again and I'm going to find another flower. Okay? In and out, in and out. In and out, in and out. All day long, that's what I do. Okay? Bees will work from sun up to sun down. They will fly only during the sun. They don't usually fly during the rain, only when it's sunny out. So if it's raining, bees will not go out and fly. They only fly when it's sunny. Because why do you think that is? They'll get really wet, right. So if I'm flying in the rain, it's really hard for me to fly with my wings. So I'm not really going to go out in when it's raining. I'm going to go out when it's kind of sunny. So I'll be working in the hive, and I'll only come out when it's sunny. The other thing is the sun is very, very important to bees because the sun is what gives them direction. So I'm a bee, and I look at the sun, and I know, oh, there's really good flowers over there, and the sun is like halfway. So I'm going to come back and tell all of my friends in here that I found some really good flowers. And they're going to follow me, and we're going to find where those flowers are, and they will go back there, back and forth, to that same area and get the honey. Once that's done, they're going to find another area. So bees are very, very smart. They have their own little GPS. You know, we have them in our cars when you're driving, and they tell your parents directions. Turn right, turn left, things like that, right? Bees are able to do that on their own. They know how to turn, they know which way to go, and they know where the flowers are. Okay. So, questions so far as I'm asking, you know, I sometimes will ask you if you have questions because I'm giving you, even the parents. Who has a question? Go ahead. Ah, so do bees sleep? That's a very good question. So at night, they really do not sleep. So even when they're back in the hive at night, they might slow down, but they are always working at night. They're either cleaning, they're moving the honey around. Sometimes if it's too hot, especially in the summer when it gets really warm, they will fan. They will fan their hive, like air conditioning, to keep it cool. They will help the queen. The queen's always laying, so they're going to take care of the queen. And another question people usually ask is, go ahead. Okay, so the queen bee, the question was, why is the queen bee so big? The reason she's so big is because she has to be able to lay all those eggs. So she's able, what a queen bee will do is when she's born, the first thing a new bee does, here's something that's interesting, is they trumpet. So when a new queen is being born out of a cell, 
she comes out and she makes this little tiny noise and you can actually hear her do this if you listen. Yep, just like that. And you hear her, okay? And what that queen is doing, a new queen will come out and she's telling the other bees, I'm here. And she's also telling the other queen, if you're here, you might want to leave because there's only one queen bee in a hive. So when she comes out and she trumpets, the other queen bee is like, oh, it's time to go. I need to move. And that's when we see swarms. When we talk about a swarm of bees and they leave the hive and people talk about them swarming, a queen will leave. She's going to take some worker bees with her and they're going to find a new home. It got too crowded. They're like, "Woo, we got to move. So she goes and she finds a new home with her workers and the other queen stays here with the other half of the hive and that's how bees reproduce. That's how they split their hives okay, and spread their genetics. So that's what a swarm basically is. It's them moving. Ah, that's a very good question. So he asked, how do the bees know who is the chosen one? Who becomes the queen? So the one the workers are the ones that determine who is going to be the queen and when it's time for a new queen. So what they do is, do you have a picture for me? The one with the, okay. They will make a bigger cell. So normally baby cells are small. See these little tiny circles here? Yeah. That's usually where the baby bees will be born. Just a small cell and they'll come out and they'll be small. If they need to make a bigger one and they want it to be a queen, it's going to be about the size of a peanut. It looks just like a peanut. And what they do is they fill it with royal jelly. They feed her more and they feed her a little bit special than they would the other bees. And that's what creates a queen bee. That's what makes her bigger and that's what gives her the ability to become the queen bee. So it's just what they're feeding her that makes her that bee. Good question. Hmm? Go ahead. We have a question. Yes. So sometimes, so she asks, can we have more than one queen being born in a hive? And yes, sometimes we can have three queens. And if that happens, they have to either all leave and one stays, or unfortunately, the first one that's born, she's going to go around and find those queen cells, and she's going to end up killing the queen that's there, because she wants to be the one queen, the number one queen. Okay, so they will fight, unfortunately, and sometimes they don't get along, unfortunately. But only one can be the queen bee in a hive. Okay. Um, how long, here's a question that people ask, how long do our bees live? How long? All right. In the summer, during this time, bees last about four to six weeks. So we're always having new bees being born because baby bees and worker bees, what they'll do is they only live for four to six weeks in the summer. And the reason for that is they fly too much. So in the summer, they're working extra hard to keep the hive ready for the summer, for the winter. And their wings start to give out, so they, they have to always make new bees. Now in the winter, how long do you think our bees last? I'll get you in a minute. So in the winter, our bees will live throughout the entire winter. So they will live longer because they're not actually moving and they're not flying during that time. You're right. 90 and 90. 90 and 90. 180. 180. 180. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's 80 you had a question? <laughs> yes. So queen bees can live up to four years? Five years. Five years. So one queen bee can live up to five years. And during the, her time, I know you guys are all excited, all she's doing is making new babies. So for five years, she's the one that makes sure that there's enough babies being laid so that the queen and the, the hive continues to survive. Okay? They will slow down in the winter. We don't really have babies being born in the winter because it's too cold. Okay? And in the winter, what they do is they come into a ball, we call it clustering. And all these bees will come around the queen bee 
and they will keep her warm in the winter. That's how they get through those cold days in the winter when it's snowing and all of us bundle up, right? We wear our jackets and our hats and our gloves. Well, they keep the queen warm. And guess how toasty that hive is in the winter? I'll get your question. What do you think? You're a little bit cooler, just a little. About 95? 95. So in the winter, the bees keep their house 95 degrees. Is your house 95 degrees? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right, so you had a question? Did you? Which one's the strongest? Probably the worker bees because they're the ones that fly the most. Okay? The bravest is our guard bees because they have to guard the hive from other bees. So can we turn it for a second? So I'm going to show you something. Okay. So this is the front of a hive, right? This is their house, okay? This is where our bees would come in and go out. Normally, if we opened this up and it was outside, they'd be flying in and out and doing their thing. Now, we don't just have one hive. We have over 30 hives. So next door, they have a neighbor hive that looks exactly pretty much the same. And next to them, they have a neighbor, just like your communities, you have houses, right? So for bees, they have to know which house is theirs because they will not go back to somebody else's house. They have to know that this is my house. So when baby bees are born, they all come out and we call it orientation. All the baby bees, you'll see them outside their house and they fly up and they fly down and they fly up and what they're doing is they're seeing where the sun is in reference to their house. So when they leave, they know that they're going to come back to this, only this hive and not somebody else's accidentally. Even though they're side by side, they know exactly which one. And they also know their queen because that's their queen. They're going to come home to their queen. Okay? The queen has its own smell. She has her own smell. So they also do it by sight, they do it by smell, and they do it by the direction of the sun. So they figure out everything around them so they know where to come back to every single day when they leave. You have a question? Um, so when baby bees are born, how do you know So we really don't know that, but the bees themselves pretty much give directions to each other. So they'll know what job they have based on what they're told when they're born. They communicate with each other. That was a good question. Hmm? And age. Ah. So younger bees are what? Younger bees would take care of the hive the most. Older bees would be? Oh. Um, so the younger bees would take care of the hive. They would be the nurse bees. They would be the ones that clean. Um, and then once they're of a certain age, that's when they do the orientation flight. And then they go out and start collecting nectar and pollen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. How do they do what? Okay, good question. That was a good question. She asked us, how do we know they're baby bees versus grown-up bees? When baby bees are born, they're a little fuzzier. They have a little more hair on them, so we call them little fuzzy bunnies because they're these little tiny, they're a little bit smaller and they're a little fuzzier. As they get older and because they move around the hive, they start to lose that fuzz that they have as a baby and that's how we know they're a little bit older bees. That was a very good question. How do we know the difference? Go ahead. Um, does the queen have like a crown? No, she doesn't have a crown, but she has a bigger backside, so her, she's longer in the back. So when we have you come up later, we're going to look for the queen to see if we can see her because she is in here. Okay? Oh, here she is. So you see how long she is? This one here? She's right here. She's a little bit longer. And she's longer than the others. 
So that's how we know when we look in a hive that that's the queen bee. She has a very long backside. Question? Why do they have a stinger? Okay, good question. Why do honeybees have stingers? So honeybees have stingers for protection, okay? And with a honeybee, if they sting you, they can only sting you one time and then unfortunately they will die. So the thing about a honeybee is they really do not want to sting you, okay? That's a last resort for a honeybee because they don't want to die. But sometimes we step on them, sometimes they get a little scared, and sometimes they accidentally sting you, okay? So that's why we kind of let them be when they're out there. But it's for protection. So as beekeepers, when we go into a hive, we have equipment that we always use. And one of the things that we use, sometimes, not all the time, is a jacket. So if we wear a jacket like this, and we zip ourselves up, uh -huh, here we go, whoop. Okay? So I got pink. Look at me. Woohoo! All right. So if we keep. Yep, this is mine. So if we're all covered, a lot of times we will. We don't really wear gloves, but people can wear gloves, okay? And I, usually we'll have our jeans on, our shoes would be covered, and we would go into a hive like this. And the reason we do that is because remember, we're going into their house, and they get a little nervous. Like, what are you doing? Where are you coming from? So they might want to come out and protect themselves. So when we wear this, they can't sting us. They can't sting us to the jacket. They can't sting us in our hair and get stuck in our head and things, you know, because they get stuck in your hair and they're like, ah, I don't know what to do. And sometimes they accidentally sting you, okay? Do you notice what color I'm wearing? Pink. Pink. Okay. So when I go into a hive, beekeepers will wear colors that are either white or pink but they will not wear what color? What color do you think we do not wear? Black. Black. Who said it? Black. black. Because what do you think I look like to a bee if I'm all in black? Black. Say it. A bear. a bear. Okay, so if I was to wear all black and go into a hive, they're gonna be like, woo, there's a bear. And they're gonna get very upset and they're gonna wanna sting you because they wanna protect. They see this dark thing coming in and bears like to eat bees. Bears don't really want to eat honey. That's a, actually that's not. Um, the honey's a bonus. A bonus. What they actually like to do? They actually like to eat the baby bees, like the stuff that's in it. It's protein. So it, to them, it's like chicken. So they're eating little tiny bees. Okay. So honey badgers, um, bears, raccoons. We'll get into. Skunks like to get into hives. So anything that's very dark. So that's why when we go in, we make sure we wear light clothes so that we don't scare our bees, okay? We also have to be very gentle when we're working our bees because you don't want to get them upset, okay? So we, when we take the frames out for honey, we, we just move them very gently. And sometimes we get stung. It's part of what we do. And it hurts a little, but then, you know, we move on. I cry. He cries. Okay. Someone had a question. I, you, you. Okay, so when the bee stings you, what happens is it detaches from their backside, and that's what's kind of left in your hand or wherever they sting you. So we always tell people when you get stung by a bee, the first thing you want to do is to be able to scrape the stinger out. You don't want to squeeze it. You just want to scrape it out either with your nail or with a credit card because what you're doing is you're getting that out, and you're also stopping the little venom from still going into you. So that's why people get itchy or they swell up or have a reaction. It's from the actual sting part. So that was a good question. Yeah, they lose their stinger. Off it goes. Okay. All right, can I have the pollen? Okay. So we talked a little bit about what the flowers give the bees, right? We know they go out and they get nectar and it gives us honey, right? But they also, get covered in pollen. You ever see them sometimes? They get all yellow and they're rolling around flowers and it feels really good. No. They love pollen, okay? And pollen's important for us because it helps us get fruit and vegetables and it helps our flowers bloom and it also helps our trees grow. So them going out and collecting pollen is very important. So what they'll do is they're gonna come over to a flower 
they literally are going to roll around, they're going to walk around, and they get all dusty. And then you'll see them, and they start pushing the dust down, because they got to fly. Now it's all over their wings, and they take their little legs, and they keep pushing it. And what you'll see on their legs, are, they call them baskets. And they keep pushing the pollen down, and then they look like they have Cheeto legs. And sometimes they're bright yellow, or they're bright orange. And they come back to the hive, and this is what it looks like. There's these little tiny balls that that's what they're bringing back into the hive. And they'll bring it in, and they're going to put it in one of the, the combs, because this is their protein. So you guys, when you eat chicken or meat or something that's protein, pollen's protein for bees, it helps them grow. And nectar and honey is energy. It gives them energy. So those are the two things that bees need when they're living for food. Um, I'm looking at the hive, and yep. why does the hive look like it's a smiley face? A what? A smiley face. A smiley face. It yeah, does. it does look like a smiley face. Yep. It's a happy hive. That's a happy hive. Our bees are happy. Any go ahead. Mm -hmm. Get itchy. Pollen. Yep. So when people have allergies, so you know when you sneeze in the summer and sometimes in the fall, when people have allergies, eating local honey is helpful because when we have our honey, it has a little bit of the pollen in there. So when people start eating local honey, it helps kind of alleviate some of those symptoms when it comes to allergies. So you'll see over time that the allergies become less and less and not as intense because of the honey. So that's why it's important to support, you know, and be around and have local honey because it helps even with your allergies. Honey never goes bad. So here's the thing about honey. It could be years. You can have a bottle of honey for eons, and it will not go bad, OK? Because it's antibacterial and antimicrobial. It'll crystallize, but it won't go bad. So when it crystallizes, it's not bad. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Um, do, you know, do you know honey from Egypt is still good? Yes, it is. You were absolutely right. So he said, did you know that honey from Egypt is still good? And they have found bottles of honey in some of the tombs, and you were absolutely correct. It was still good, as long as it was still sealed. Well, it could have came with them from wherever they were. Sometimes they travel with honey because they were able to travel with it when the people. Okay. Uh huh. Closed it. It would still be good. Yep. Yep. Probably. Okay. Oh, yep. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, good question. So when bees will leave, honey bees will build their homes in abandoned trees. They sometimes will find little spots in your house, unfortunately, and they will build between the walls of your house. So I have a tree south in my yard, and I saw some bees going in it. Could that be honey bees? They could be, or we also have native bees, which we call mason bees. Mason bees love to build in wood, and when you put up those little pollinator ones that have the little circles, you know, like they look like uh, birdhouses, and people put them in their yards, those are like for the native bees, like the mason bees. So a lot of times that might even be just mason bees going in. Yep. Yep. Hmm? Yeah, carpenter bees will go into your house, so they're going to go into the wood. Does a queen bee ever die? Eventually, yes. Yep, she gets older and her time is done, and then they have a new queen. As a okay. beekeeper, I actually make the queens. So I'll take an egg, put it into a special cup, and then put it into a queenless hive, 
And because that cup is a certain size, nice. they'll actually make a queen, queen in there. Yep. So bees, we do two things with our bees. We do the honey with them, but we also raise them for backyard beekeeping because it's important for some people. They want to be able to have bees. For us, it's about being able to have bees in the community. So even though we're a farm, we are an urban farm, technically. So our bees are in people's backyards. So like in Rowe, for example, we have some hives. We have some in Cranford. We have some in Colonia. Oh, yeah. So what we'll do is we will actually put the tops of roofs. Tops of roofs. Um, so we will put the hives in their yard. We'll maintain the hive. And then the homeowner gets a gallon of honey from that hive. So it's a way to kind of help spread, be able to have pollinators all around so that it does help them and helps the community with your gardens and things like that. Okay. Yep. Um, they're not always, uh, like, Shape and size Shape and is size the biggest kind of thing. Skinnier. skinnier. Yeah. Yep. Skinnier sometimes, like those ones, like wasps. Wasps. So wasps are skinnier. How are we on time? Oh, oh I just. Okay. Okay. It's up to you. Um, but can you, can a person, like, reach out to you and um, offer to be a bee? Yes. Yes. House, so yep. They can go to pointerbeefarm.com. And we have cards too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So the reason we chose Pointer Bee Farm, because people will ask us that, why do we have a dog and why do we have a bee? And why are we Pointer Bee Farm? So we also rescue, we're part of a rescue that does um, German short hair pointers. So we took the rescue idea and the bees and combined them. So what we do is part of the sales of our honey goes towards supporting the rescue as well. So we kind of join the two. And our dogs love the bees. Two of them don't. One of them likes to eat them. She hasn't learned when she gets stung not to do it again. She does go right back out. So I know we're all getting a little to that point because I know it kind of gets a lot. So what we might have you do now is come up and you guys can look at the hive. We can answer questions a little more one-on-one. -on -one. And if we can, we will show you the queen bee, okay?